from London to Moscow, and Manchester to Malta, from Birmingham to Dusseldorf, and 18 times a day to Paris, from the Shetland Isles to Edinburgh. These are but some of the more than 90 destinations, a network which adds up to... Number one in Europe. Just what does this mean? In our fast-moving, fast-talking world, is this another of those all-embracing claims? Or do the facts make up a picture of a number one airline? Well, here's the picture. See what you think. So let's take first things first. BEA just didn't happen. It was born from the traditions of the Royal Air Force and BOAC. In fact, it was in 1946 that the European routes of BOAC formed the basis of the airline. A number of British air companies were then brought together within the Airways Corporation, which became known to the world as British European Airways. And since those days, 25 years ago, BEA has many firsts. In the early 50s, the start of the Silver Wing service to Paris using the Elizabethan aircraft and the world's first regular passenger-carrying helicopter service. Then another step forward, the first ever turbine-powered passenger service, the very successful BEA Vickers Viscount, which had the special honor of being entrusted many times with the first family in the land. And as the years passed, BEA spread its wings into the jet age. In 1967, a Trident made BEA's first automatic landing on a scheduled flight. Since then, over half a million passengers have been landed under automatic control. This was another world first in civil aviation. Today, with a fleet of nearly 120 aircraft, BEA takes its place among the top great airlines of the world. In terms of passengers carried, BEA is the largest airline in Europe. To be fair, BEA has the advantage of operating from London, which in terms of international traffic is the busiest airport in the world. This is the crossroads of the airlines and the natural transfer point from the long range machines to, well, shall we just say with pride that nearly 400,000 visitors choose BEA. It is an astonishing fact that on a busy day, London's air traffic control handle close on a thousand flights. During the peak hours, the frequency of landings and takeoffs reaches one every 50 seconds. BEA is geared to meet this ever-increasing flow of passengers. Whether it be a visitor from North America who wants an onward flight to Italy, or a Frenchman who wants to visit Iceland, they will come to this latest addition to London Airport, rather fittingly named the Number One Terminal. And they will become a number one passenger on Britain's European airline. Every year, BEA is the choice of nine million people. Why? Well, the answer, to oversimplify a very complex and competitive business is the right equipment, managed and handled by the right people. So, let's start with the people. Long before the flight is called, the captain makes his thorough pre-flight check. Bottom is closed, closed. Starter master on. On. Select two and start. Two. Two lights. Start flight. The departure of then check-in time. To the businessman, it's just routine. To the mother, a very natural concern for a rather special passenger. This is no moment to have extra problems on your hands.
to many, the moment of check-in is the first personal contact with the flight. A travel agent now far away has made all the arrangements. The ticket says, OK. But I wonder, is it? Or has someone along the line forgotten? Oh, good. Everything's OK. Gate 10. What lies behind this simple booking? Well, it's anything but simple. In fact, it's Beacon, a vast computer complex which gives the BEA network an immediate reservation system and coordinates the many requests that make up a total service for business and holiday travelers. Returning by BE 023 from Orly on the 19th. Yes, his accommodation is confirmed for five nights at the Georges Sank. The fly drive car will be at the airport on his arrival. But the present-day traveller takes this high level of service very much for granted. Quite rightly, they expect airlines to be efficient. They expect a service which is as streamlined as the aircraft. But few realise what goes on behind the quiet exterior, or the calm interior, which greets them as they step aboard. The thousands of staff and services which make this flight possible. But this is the nature of our jet age. And BEA, like all leading airlines, must not only be with it, but way, way ahead. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of British European Airways, Captain Gilman and his crew would like to welcome you on board this Trident aircraft. Our flight to Athens will take three hours, 20 minutes. And we shall be flying at a height of 31,000 feet. Will you please read the safety leaflet and make sure your seatbelt... Safety on board. This is much more than a leaflet on a seat. Every member of BEA's flying crews, from captain to stewardess, must attend this school for safety. Now, you may fly for many years and not be involved in an emergency, but you could well have one on your first supernumerary flight. And if this did happen and there were no steps to get the passengers off the aircraft, you would have to evacuate them by using the escape slide. Once it out, your passengers would arrive at the door and you would instruct them to sit on the door sill, put their feet straight in front of them and slide down the slide, leaning forward all the way down. Girls, during our deportment classes, we're going to cover all aspects of good grooming and visual poise. Remember that whilst in uniform, stewardesses should be very feminine. If you select the right young lady, use the most effective methods of training and show her by good example you have the makings of a charming and efficient BEA personality. But whilst you can improve deportment and speech from video playback, when it comes to the gentle art of makeup, well, some of the girls may be way ahead of the teacher. Oh, I see you've chosen funny gold. Do you like this color? Yes. Like but quite seriously, at the grooming workshop, as this part of the BEA training center is called, there is a strict eye for detail and a right and wrong way of doing most things. Ah, oh, looks all right to me. Uh, did the lady ask for ice? No. No, we'll no. never put ice in unless A, they ask for it or you ask them first. I see. Would you like ice? I would, please. And, and when it comes to cabin service, it's the same attention to detail. Even the classroom is the right shape. It's all designed to give the new stewardesses and stewards the best possible training, so that the service in flight will have that easy, friendly, number one quality. Like most things which are done well, it looks easy. And yet only one out of every 15 applicants is accepted for cabin staff on BEA. To this young passenger, 
There must be a special magic about lunch being served so high above the clouds. Mummy, where does it all come from? You know, in BEA, we serve 35,000 meals a day to our passengers. Admittedly, some of these aren't full meals, but they all involve some form of cabin service. Few people realize that the average flight in BEA is just over the hour, and with 80 passengers on board, this leaves us with only 45 seconds per passenger. At London, we have not only 1,400 stewards and stewardesses, but 500 people working at the flight catering center, including 35 chefs, led by the head chef, who is Swiss. Although these short flights and quick turnarounds in Europe present a time problem to cabin staff, they do have very real catering advantages. Everything can be prepared and served just that much fresher. And BEA makes a feature of fresh produce, cream, salads, vegetables and fruits, and to give variety, return flights are catered for by the destination country. on schedule at 10 minutes past four. The flying conditions all the way are good, and in Athens, the temperature is in the edges. I trust that the cabin staff are taking good care of you, and that you're enjoying your trip. Thank you for your attention. And so flight BE430 arrives at Athens. And the passengers go their way through this modern marble temple to discover or rediscover the glory that was Greece. The flight to Athens was typically trouble free. But as BEA operates some 500 services every day, it must be ready to meet problems. It is, for this is when an airline proves itself. Just going to call Beeline now. Have you any other snacks? No, just the yellow level, I think, falling, sell them, and the air cross on fifth turn around. All right, sir, we'll do. Beeline London, Beeline 435. Modern jetliners are extremely sophisticated machines, and the Tridents are no exception. But they were named Trident because every vital system is in triplicate. So, as on this flight, when something goes wrong, the captain has two systems in reserve. Roger, 435, over to BTEC. Uh, BTEC, uh, B-Line 435, Fox Alpha. Uh, yellow hydraulic contents have been falling steadily throughout the flight. They're now in the red sector, and we're losing pressure as well. Uh, B-435, are your blue and green systems satisfactory? Uh, BTEC, B-Line 435, affirmative. Uh, Roger 435, thank you. Well, Fox Alpha won't make the turn round, Eddie. Fox Alpha, OK, can we use Fox Bravo off the Malta service? Yes, I would think so. I'll get in touch with Mansell. Oh, yes. Good, Morris. Uncover Fox Bravo. We'll probably use Fox Alpha and make the schedule. These are some of the backroom boys who each day and night have to maintain schedule. But it only needs one mechanical snag or bad weather somewhere in the vast network to start a chain reaction of difficulties. This is when the great reserves of an organization such as BEA keep the planes going and coming back day after day throughout the year. One thing is certain. After that Trident has safely delivered its passengers, it'll be off to the engineering base where the fault will be put right. In line with BEA's strict policy, the plane will not return to service, however urgently it may be needed, until it's absolutely right. And that means right in triplicate again. Whether it be a major engine change or a fuse to be replaced, there are 4,000 highly qualified staff to service the BEA fleet.
Of all the firsts in BEA's 25 years, it could be said that the Autoland program was of great significance. To acknowledge this contribution to British industry, BEA received the honour of the Queen's Award. And to do the honours on behalf of Her Majesty, here is Field Marshal Sir Gerald Templer. You've enabled Britain to take the world lead in this vital field. And it was with considerable pride that Sir Anthony Millwood accepted the award on behalf of the airline, for it was his last year as chairman of BEA. Gentlemen, it is a great privilege to have you here today, sir, to hand over to us, on behalf of the Queen, this very coveted award. I'm particularly glad that we have received this award for auto land equipment. Among those present that day was a legendary wartime night fighter, John Cunningham, who is today a director and chief test pilot of Hawker Sidley. Uh, the Trident One, I had the pleasure of flying for the first time in 1962, and it entered passenger carrying service with BEA in 1965. Uh, the Trident One was followed by the Trident Two, and uh, now the latest of the series, the Trident III. The major improvement on this aeroplane over the earlier Tridents is that we have a fourth booster engine fitted in the tail. This gives us a good increase in power for a small increase in weight and has allowed us to take a much bigger payload off short airfield than the earlier Tridents. Every single feature of the aeroplane, whether it's the engine performance or the aerodynamic performance, is recorded and analyzed very closely. Our test program has covered the complete automatic landing on this aeroplane and of course we have built on all the experience that we've gained from the earlier development work on Autoland on the Tridents 1 and 2. Autoland is many things to many people. To the passenger, greater safety with fewer delays or diversions. To the airline, better timekeeping. To the pilots, well, here's a senior captain of BEA. Auto land, as far as we're concerned in BEA, is really the means by which we are mounting our program of all weather operations. We are aiming, over the next few years, to be able to operate in the conditions of fog, that is down to visibilities of some 50 meters. And it's not only fog, but blinding snow and rain, which can close airports and cancel flights at a moment's notice. It is in this direction that BEA has been looking and working for 12 years. The best technical brains and a lot of money have put BEA way ahead in this important field of bad weather landings. But there's no instant magic which can be electronically switched on. It is a step-by-step -step procedure, where very advanced equipment in the air and at the airport must be coordinated with flying experience. With a passenger service, it has to be a careful process of trial without error. However sophisticated instrument flying may become, the final judgment and decisions will remain with the responsible captains of BEA. Can I have the latest actual? Yes, well, I have this one here for 950, visibility is 900 meters. It is thinning out, they expect it to reach 60. We have spoken of the people and the planes of BEA. This then is the BEA story, or rather part of it. For BEA is far more than a big airline. It is a big enterprise. From the airline stems a wide variety of travel-related services. There is BEA Cargo, operating from London at the largest cargo center of its kind in the world. Then there's the hotel reservation service and the fly drive scheme and a number of allied companies, BEA Air Tours, British Air Services, BEA Helicopters and Silver Wing Surface Arrangements and the Sovereign Group of Hotels. Under the leadership of BEA's chairman, Mr. Henry Marking, top management guides these many investments to one end to offer the passengers of BEA a total customer service. 
but the primary concern is still running the airline and planning for the years ahead. For new generations of passengers and new generations of aircraft which will carry the name BEA through the 70s. For this airline intends to stay number one.